MPs on Brexit after that difficult visit to Brussels last week. Uh, in advance, we've been told she's going to use this afternoon's appearance to try to crush the growing calls for a second referendum. But Jeremy Corbyn is also under growing pressure from his own side to call for a vote of no confidence in the government. So what should Labour's Brexit strategy be now? Uh, joining me to discuss that are Sonia Soda, chief leader writer at The Observer, uh, the former senior policy advisor to Ed Miliband, amongst others, uh, John McTernan, uh, also uh, former uh, operations director for Tony Blair, and also here, uh, Sam Tarry, who's uh, been an advisor to Jeremy Corbyn. Welcome uh, to you all. Uh, it should be said the context of this is Labour not doing too well in the polls. I mean, a little bit, little bit behind when we all know there's massive disarray uh, in the Conservative Party. Uh, so what do you think uh, Mr Corbyn and Labour should do? So carry on as at present? I think until this point they have had the right strategy, to be fair to them. It's been really frustrating. It's been frustrating for party members. It's been frustrating for people in the trade union movement. But they've got to strike and they have to strike soon. And I think they've got to bide their time, as they have done, but then do that at the right moment. Because the danger is if we let things drag on too far into the new year, in my view, that moment of maximum impact will actually be lost. So does that mean you'd, you'd like to see that no-confidence vote this week? I'd like to see a no confidence vote as soon as they think is the best possible time. So maybe that's going to be this week. I think there's a couple of factors that could come into play over the next few days, but potentially they need to strike. And I think it will be a powerful moment. You know, Jeremy will really show that courage of leadership if that happens, and the party and I think the polls will rally behind him. What do you think, Sally? I think a no confidence vote is a holding strategy for Labour. So Labour are not going to win a no confidence vote in Parliament unless either the DUP pe peels away for the government, which I absolutely can't see happening, or, you know, there's even been some talk of maybe some hard yeah. Eurosceptic but it, but, but it is, is, it is, it is first in line because it's the, it's it's the route part, to the general it's, election it's, 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 which yes, the conference voted for. it is their policy, for. but I actually agree with Sam. I think they've been holding this sort of holding strategy, as it were. Um, they've got this no-confidence vote as policy, but they are going to have to do something beyond a no-confidence vote soon. So Theresa but, May's but strategy... But do they need to get it out of the way, do you think? Um, no, I think it's just optics, really. I mean, they're not going to win it, so uh, it's it's a position they're holding to. They're not going to have it if they don't think they can win it. It's just a way for them to say they've got a policy while they're still holding their line of constructive ambiguity. But I think they're going to have to move soon. Otherwise, it's going to be a choice between deal and no deal the closer it gets what to think, um, the line. I think it's time for some honesty. Um, I have supported Jeremy Corbyn's strategy. One of the few things I've supported about him. He's been right to be ambiguous about this, to stand back. But everything's about process. It's about will there be a vote of no confidence? Will there be? Let's actually say what we believe in the Labour Party. We believe we shouldn't leave the European Union. Let's actually just say we want to invoke uh, our committee to revoke it now. We want to stay in the European Union. We won't have a second referendum. Parliament should decide to stay. Let's have some leadership, uh, not this kind of holding exactly. off, holding off. I think Labour is at a point, a crossroads, in which we need to decide where we want to build our electoral coalition. You know, for a long time we've been rightly looking at those places that were left behind, places like Dagenham, Plot, Pates, like Mansfield, places where we went backwards against kind of obviously the populist right and which had heavy yeah. Brexit voting kind of leanings. But at the same time, I think there are an awful lot of places in the country where the anger amongst Labour voters is actually those that want us to stay in the European Union. And we do have to make a strategic I mean, Pony, decision Pony based on that. I does suggest that if Labour adopted something close to John's position, the party would be well ahead of the Conservatives. I think that Jeremy and his advisers are looking at all of the available evidence. I don't think there's any problem in saying that there's obviously clearly differing views around the shadow cabinet table. I think quite honestly, it is about what our best electoral strategy is. I was just saying earlier to John, what about Scotland? You know, in Scotland, most working class people actually voted to remain. You know, there are 19 seats we need to take back there. So I think now is that time where we've actually got a policy that is sequenced right, that everyone's behind, the trade unions behind, the members are behind, but it's about when we operationalise that and about then moving forward for that strategy to but win so the general election. We know that when he was a backbencher, Mr Corbyn never voted in favour of uh, the European Union, went against party policy on that. Do you think there's any chance that he could ever become the leader of a Rema uh, remain the leader of a remain a Labour Party? It's quite difficult to see, I think, and that's one of the reasons why I think. I mean, well, well, well yes, he, he is, but he is not himself. He's, you know, we know he's deeply Eurosceptic. We know this is why there's been quite a lot of division within the shadow cabinet on Labour's position. And I think, you know, this is one of the reasons why I think Labour should get out there and back a second referendum. 
because I think... Um, well, that's you know, a holding strategy. I mean, John's saying go the whole way and come out and say what yeah, he wants Yeah, well, I, I think a second referendum is really the only way of resolving the impasse that we're in. Um, it's very clear that there's no parliamentary majority in favour of anything. I really, you know, I, I, I respect John's call for leadership. Wouldn't it be a fine thing if we saw some leadership after 30 yeah. months since the Brexit vote? I don't think we're going to get there, but I think that there may well be a majority in Parliament. But I think, late, but I think we really need to see Labour steering towards it for a referendum to put the deal to the people. It's the right thing to do. Um, you know, after all, in 2016, it was very unclear what people were voting for when they voted Leave. Now they know. It's right to put it back to them. The problem with the second referendum is simply this. The voters know the second referendum is a device to make them stay in the European Union. So they'll distrust the referendum and then they'll try to actually st to leave the European Union. The point is, well, you, you think that'd be a kind of a Mr. Angry reaction? Very, very reaction, strong angry yeah. reaction. People know what this debate is about. It's not about a second referendum. It's not about a no commerce motion. It's about should we stay in or should we leave? I think we should stay, and I think that. But the, why I wouldn't they be more angry if they had suddenly told uh, Mr. Corbyn, sitting here in Westminster, yeah. has decided you, you, to ignore your vote and to stay I, in? Because I think people are sick and tired of this kind of political positioning. And so Jeremy being standing back from it has been fine because it's all been about the Tory party. But the public don't like politics as it is. And if we believe uh, that having a second referendum is a way to rebuild trust in British politics, I think we're barking up the wrong tree. Trust has been lost in politics. You restore trust by acting with leadership. Does Labour really need to move on this at all? Because I think to do what John said, I have to say, would be a very dangerous strategy. Yeah. I mean, I think there are lots of people whose heart might want to do exactly what John says, but my head would say that that really would wind up people mm. to the point where you actually have some of these things coming true about people protesting outside MPs' office in a pretty nasty way and so on. You know, look, whether people like it or not, one way forward, which is genuinely democratic, is to allow people to decide mm. to have a final say. You know, I'm a trade unionist. I believe that yeah. if you get a deal, it should be taken back to the people, that's fairly obvious. But isn't right? there a temptation for any Labour politician to say, look, this is not our mess, this was created by the Tories, the referendum uh, was held by the Tories, the Tories are the one who can't agree on what to do next. So even if the country crashes out, uh, as some see it, uh, out in March with no deal, with no agreement, here's what's, what's going to do, in the end, it's only going to redound to Labour's advantage because people are going to say this is a mess created by Labour the Tories. Labour have definitely had a strategy of like leaving this very much at the Tories' door, and I think they should continue to do that. But it doesn't mean that they can do it at the expense of tanking the economy. If we want to deliver the kind of manifesto and the radical agenda of investing to rebuild communities across this country, we're not going to do that if we're just smashed out onto WTO I mean, laws. Jeremy Corbyn pretty much says the economy is tanked anyway. Uh, and I, I think that would be that's an extremely cynical take on the parliamentary Labour party. There are Labour MPs, I guarantee you, who would rather lose their seat rather than crash out um, with no deal. It would be catastrophic for the country. It would be catastrophic for Labour voters in working class communities up and down the country. Um, there is no way, I think, that the Labour Party, in opposition anywhere, I think they would do everything that they can to stop us crashing out I mean, with no deal. you played hardball in your time. Why not go for it and blame the Tories? Well, of course you've got to blame the Tories. Um... But in the end, you've got to take responsibility too, which is, yes, blame them, but what would we do? Uh, and I think there's a, there's a genuine problem about no deal. But the real problem about discussion about no deal is this. There's only one thing that MPs have voted for. They've actually voted for no deal. By invoking Article 50, they set a deadline. If there's nothing agreed by March 29th, we're leaving. If they can't find a majority to do any other thing, we're leaving with no deal. So the MPs in there have actually voted for no deal. They may not have believed that's what they were doing at the time. They have opened the door to no deal. And that's why I think, in a sense, this is such a big crisis. People so have Labour to... would get some of the blame, in other words? I think, think so. People are, Labour are complicit in it. Mm. Labour, the whole political uh, class yeah. Everyone has to start being yeah. a bit more honest. And I think you don't rebuild yeah. trust through honesty, but you start to have an honest conversation. But see, lo logically, if you're right, yeah. the Lib Dems would be doing a lot better, wouldn't they? Well, the Lib... The Lib well, there's that poll that said if, if the Labour Party don't move behind the people's vote... And all, there are votes available for the for the Liberal Democrats. And I think the truth of modern politics is it's not the leader of the party, it's not the policies of the party. The public want to have their say. And I think there's a lot of people out there who are nervous about Brexit. There's a lot of people who are really angry, like Remainers 
very many of my friends, uh, there's not a lot of anger on, on the part of leavers. The, the leave politicians are getting quite angry. I think workers in Bridge End, I think workers at JLR in Birmingham, I think workers in Well, Nassanada I see quite a lot of anger the, on social media. I mean, I don't know whether it's... it's an angry I don't form. know that social uh, media is People saying, we voted leave, leave means leave. Yeah. Who are yeah. these people to I frustrate think John's us? right. It's in the... And I think this is why we should be wary of just buying automatically into these arguments that if Brexit were not to happen, it would be a betrayal of the people and there would yeah. be a massive, dangerous populist backlash. It is in some people's interest to argue yeah. that. Um, you know, they are trying, doing everything in their power to, re to, to pre prevent a second referendum. So I think we, we should be wary of those arguments. John, I think one thing which needs to be said very plainly and very clearly, if there was to be a yeah. second referendum, and I would definitely prefer a general election instead of that, but if there was, it cannot and must not be run by the same bunch of cretins that ran the last one. That was one of the worst political campaigns that's ever been delivered. And if we have the same hectoring establishment figures running that campaign again, it will not just be lost, it will be lost we by might have taken a back. No, because we need to win on the kind of popular, populist, domestic yeah. agenda that Jeremy's putting forward. Yeah. We say to people, look, this is a choice, actually, about rebuilding the country yeah. on this kind of agenda. That's how that referendum will be I just want to ask you finally, why isn't Labour doing better now, given the mess in the Tory party? I think the Labour, uh, the Labour are being judged, in the end, on a, on a comparison of leadership. People see in Theresa May things they respect about her doggedness, her determination. At least she knows where she's going. They look at Jeremy Corbyn, they're not clear. They, see, they, they don't see the strength that they want. They don't see great strength in Theresa May. In a contrast competition, she looks a bit better, that's all. We're, we are led by a bunch of pygmies at the moment, uh, and he's simply smaller than the others. I think as soon as Labour come off the fence, you'll see Corbyn actually getting a lot more popular. I think there is a difficulty, and one of the downsides of the ambiguity strategy Although it's meant we can be all things to all people, it does mean we're not getting the coverage, we're not on the front foot all of the time. I think if we were to come off the fence, it would quite clearly then in a show in the polls. Yeah. Um, I think that's a debate that we need to be having at the moment. I think there's a lot of evidence to say, well, not so much mean? about being pro-European, but about saying that we've got a plan to go through this, to win a referendum if that happened, obviously if the general election then didn't happen first, and to do it on the kind of popular agenda. Look, if you look at all the polls that say that, oh yeah, Jeremy's not that popular, his manifesto and his policies are off the Richter scale popular amongst most of the voters in this country. I mean, that's a problem, isn't it, when your, po where your policies are far more popular than the man? And I mean, I would suggest that that maybe should be giving the Labour Party a bit of a message and a bit of a signal. But I mean, I, I, I agree. I think the strategy of you know, the Labour Party got very much got a strategy of let the Tories implode, we'll sit back and watch it. And I think that's not working for them in terms of where they really need to be in terms of polling. OK, thank you all very much indeed. Fascinating stuff. Is Labour uh, going to move? We shall see. You're watching All Out.